Heavenly Father, we bless your name. Heavenly Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We honor you. We appreciate you. We just want to say, Lord, as we have gathered, as we have gathered to eat from the table of heaven, our biggest prayer is, may your word cause a great light in our lives. May your word shine so bright in our lives. Because we know that the entrance of your word is like light unto us. And we know, O oh God, that when you are about to speak, then it means you are about to cause a shift in our lives. Therefore, Lord God Almighty, we pray, we thank you, and we know that what you are about to do in our lives will cause a mighty, 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 mighty shift because light shines in the darkness and darkness would not comprehend the light. So we pray, O oh God, cause your light at the hearing of this word, cause your light to shine so mighty upon our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. So people of God, once again, as we have gathered, I just want to say, I welcome you. And before we share the word, as we are doing our final episode of our identity series, but before we go there, I just want to say, I appreciate the messages that you have been sending me. I appreciate it. I don't want to come uh, doing this final episode without firstly appreciating all the messages. You know, all the messages and all the testimonies. And uh, some have been sending voice notes. Some have been sending messages. I appreciate each and every one of you. Each and every one of you who have responded, who have been blessed by this identity series. I pray may God bless you. May, may God bless you. I have to come and appreciate because I don't want it to look like I am not responding to the people of God. So I appreciate you and I thank God because I know that when the Lord speaks to you, he is planning to cause a shift. We're not here for entertainment. We're not here for any other reasons. But when the Lord speaks to his nation and when the Lord speaks and when the Lord addresses his people, he is ready to cause a shift. So I'm praying wherever you are, that may God cause a shift in your life. Any place that needs a shift in your life, as you are hearing this word, may God cause a shift. Our identity as spirits, our identity as spirits. Now, there's something that um, we said last time. Concerning our identity as spirits. I said, there are two versions of you as a spirit. <sighs> there is you without a body. And there is you with a body. And uh, you without a body... It is like you have received a spirit 
without measure. And to be honest with you, speaking about your vision without a body, the spirit without measure, you cannot be limited by time. You are beyond time. You are eternal. Uh, you cannot also be limited by territories or places. You cannot also be limited by realms, which is, is something that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about realms. But even realms, whether physical or spiritual, even realms cannot limit you as a spirit. And I will talk about those realms, but I have to first highlight that you without a body, when you are absent in your body and you are present in the spirit, I mean, that's the version of you, of who you really are, because there is who you were before even the foundations of the earth. You know, and when I say to you that you cannot be limited by time, although today we're going to be talking about realms, but you cannot be limited even by time. Do you know that you, as a spirit, you can prophesy your own parent? You can tell your own parent how he or she was born. You can prophesy about the childhood life of your mother. You can prophesy about the childhood life of your father. Because that's how spiritual you are. You know. So you cannot be limited by time. You cannot also be limited by a place. You know. You know. Because your vision. We, we have to talk about you without a body. For you to fully understand yourself as a spirit. You're beyond time, you are beyond territories, and you are beyond realms. Now, are we trapped? I, I know that we are spirits, but... Are we trapped in our bodies? Are, are, are our bodies limiting us? Are our bodies limiting us from really... Do we need to die first and separate between the spirit and the body for us to see how powerful we are are we trapped in our bodies are our bodies our greatest enemies are our bodies really limiting us because maybe we want to fly so high in the spirit But our bodies are limiting us. So, are we trapped in our bodies? (laughs) 
you know scientists they believe that well they call it conscious i call it spirit they call it conscious there's a belief although they don't want to believe in god but there's a belief that beyond this reality that we are in the world that we can touch feel taste you know that beyond this reality there are other rea- realities beyond this reality we are in there are other realities where the essence of our being they exist in you exist in other realms although you exist in this realm but th- this is not what um i want us to f- focus on it is even the deeper truth which they have discovered that it is only a small part of us that exists on the earth and the larger part of us exists in other realms in the higher realms that it's only the part of you that decided to reincarnate on the earth that exists on the earth but a larger part of you exists in other realms so beyond this reality there are other realities that exist out there that the essence of our souls and the essence of our spirits they already exist in because as he is in heaven so are we on the earth so no you are not trapped in your body you are trapped in your body when you believe that you are trapped in your body you are that powerful that you can create a reality the day you believe that your body limits you it's a reality that you have created for yourself but the day you believe that your body cannot limit you again is another reality you create for yourself so are we trapped in our human bodies it will depend on what you believe as a spirit if you do believe as a spirit that your body i'm trapped in this body <laughs> then that's a reality you create for yourself but the day you believe that i cannot be limited by this body i am not my own body yes i live in my body in fact i chose this body i was reincarnated in this body 
but I am not my own body. I am spirit. <laughs> you are like that drink called Sprite. And I think the person who came up with that drink called Sprite is spiritual. <laughs> you, you are like that drink called Sprite. It has too much acid. You know. That when you take the bottle and you move it and you shake it then you open and something comes out spirit is like that it cannot be limited you know it's it springs out as a drink so that word sprite I think the guy had a revelation about the spirit. You know. Spirit. It's something that moves from one realm to another realm without changing its form. So it's up to you. Do you believe you are trapped in your body? Do you believe there is another realm? Do you believe that you cannot be limited by what you touch, by what you feel, by what you taste? Do you believe that there is another world beyond the world that you are in? So let me take you through something. Let, let me take you through something concerning those realms. Because I said scientists have discovered that beyond these realities that we have, there are other realities. And although as scientists, that's where their mind stops. That's when now spiritual people, that's when now spiritual people must come. Because they cannot explain those realms. You know, we can explain those realms. And we are about to explain those realms. But they are right about one thing. Beyond this reality, there are other realities where our where the essence of who we are, the souls, they call it the conscious. <laughs> they say there's no such a thing as a spirit, there's only a conscious. We know, we know, we call it, we know, we call it the spirit. The higher version of yourself, the spirit. There are other realities where we exist in. And where we exist in, because I'm about to take you to the first realm, right? I will talk about three realms today, right? I'll talk about the physical realm and I'll talk about the spiritual realm, right? <sighs> and what triggers my mind is the fact that a larger part of yourself it's only a small percentage of yourself which exists on the earth this is why you experience deja vu this is what this is why everywhere you go you're like i've been in this place it is because you have lived in other realms. You have, <laughs> you, you have touched the spiritual realm before you touched the physical realm.
but maybe let's go to the to the maybe let's go to the physical realm but we have to establish this first that a larger part of you exists in the spirit and a lower part of you exists in the physical world But maybe let me just take you to the physical realm. The physical realm, which a lower part of ourselves exists in. The physical world is a world that you have been reincarnated is a world where you have clothed a physical body because you cannot operate in a physical world while you don't have animals cannot operate in the water okay let me put it this way each realm to access it i don't i don't care what realm is it you need a body to exist in that realm in order for you to access that realm there are angels that stay in the sun there are angels that stay in the water there are angels that stay in the mountains the angels that stay in the sun they have bodies that makes them to survive where they are that's why you as a human being you cannot live under the sun you know because spiritual beings that live there they have bodies that allow them to survive there you cannot live underwater you know you cannot live under water because water has a, 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 a animals that they have the kind of bodies that you 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 need to take a form of a body to survive in a specific realm we exist in the glory of god because we have bodies we have we, we we have a uh, bodies that allow us to survive in such an environment so uh, you you must know that when you came on earth you have to take a natural body and let me tell you something guys before we go to the spiritual uh, realm because we're going to talk about the spiritual realm a lot whether you believe in reincarnation or you don't believe in reincarnation it does not mean that reincarnation does not exist reincarnation means you come as you are as a spirit there's nothing that changes about you it's just that you choose to wear a specific body in order for you to survive in a world which you are sent in which means which means when the angels came in genesis chapter 2 they could not come on earth as angels they needed to clothe physical bodies they needed to take a form of a human in order for them to survive on the earth you know so let, let, let let's let's put let, let, let's put it this way in the beginning the word created everything christ who, christ who, who was the word at the beginning in the beginning right because if i say at the beginning uh, it would mean the beginning had time so let me not use the word at let me use the word in the beginning because <laughs> i say in the beginning 
to say in to say at you are speaking of a specific time but when you are saying in you are speaking about a place there was no specific time where the beginning began so let us say in the beginning the word was with god the word was god in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god in the beginning in the place called the beginning christ created the heavens and the earth the world there is sin and the world there is not sin and then what did he do after that then the word became flesh reincarnation God reincarnated I love Apostle Paul's word he says ah guys I know that we have different doctrines I know that we might agree on baptism we might disagree on water baptism we might disagree on all other doctrines it's allowed but we have to agree on on the fundament we have to agree on one thing one thing must not be debated we we can debate about anything anything we can debate about it but let's not debate about this he says without any controversy without any debate please at least if i can get every one of us to agree on <laughs> to agree on this one thing please we we may debate about any other thing but please unless we will become muslims unless we will become other uh, 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 sectors we have to agree on this thing that the mystery of godliness this is the mystery of godliness it is the fact that this is the greatest secret that was ever pulled from humanity let us agree on one thing this is the mystery of god this is the secret of godliness god was made manifest in the flesh god was manifested in the flesh Shana Mahasaya Urama Kusaya mm. David says David says David says I saw him I, I saw him <laughs> Yes he was not yet born physically I saw him in the spirit He was riding a cherub He 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 was he was riding a cherubim with wings I saw him Nami be, Jesus has not yet been born but I have this testimony <laughs> let me sleep with this testimony I, I saw it spiritual before he was born ah, I already saw it I saw him with the cherubim and he rendered the heavens it means he, teared up, he first teared the heavens apart and he came down and he came down he didn't just leave the heavens he tore the heavens apart someone once asked me a question uh, when i was doing a questions and answers and, and one person asked me a question he said man of god i understand that the veil was torn from top to bottom and then um the curtain was was opened and we entered god's presence why 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 was it significant that it must start from the top to the bottom why the top to the bottom why not is there any maybe i'm thinking too much but is there any significance on why the veil was torn from top to bottom it is because jesus first tear the heavens apart before coming down on earth hmm? he first broke the heavens and and <sighs> my god he 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 rendered the heavens shakabu husana maha and he came down on earth
and apostle paul said no guys let's not debate about this thing let's debate about tides if you want let's debate about anything <laughs> you know but let's not debate about the fact that jesus was god in the flesh please Let's agree that God came down. God was reincarnated. So reincarnation exists, whether you, you believe it or not. Believing it and not believing it cannot change this fact. Can we debate the fact that God walked on earth? God sat down with men in the table. God broke the bread. God, God, God poured the wine. That when he was crucified, it was not wrong for us to crucify him as the lamb because he is the lamb. He was the lamb that was made to come to, to destroy sin and, 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 and destroy everything that was pertaining to sin. He was supposed to be the lamb. His crucifixion was supposed to happen. But it was wrong for us to crucify him as God. It was wrong for us to crucify him as king. It was not wrong to crucify him as the lamb. But we were wrong by crucifying him as king. Because no one can crucify the king. No one. And when they tear his body. My God. The word. Remember he was the word at the beginning. It's just that he took a, a human body, just like you. The difference between you and Jesus is how Jesus was born. Jesus was not born in a natural way. God cancelled na nat natural means to bring Jesus on earth. You came in a natural way. But please, don't look down upon yourself just because... You came in a natural way. No, you were reincarnated. You, you might be born in a natural way, but you were a spirit before your body. <laughs> you chose to live in that body. <laughs> yes, I understand. The birth of Jesus was miraculous. You know, it, it, it was miraculous. It was something that human beings cannot comprehend but it doesn't mean that it is only jesus who was reincarnated you know you were reincarnated you know you clothed the body that you are but you are not that body so the word who was at the beginning and the word was with god and the word was god and he clothed the flesh. At the cross, guys, they took his flesh and they tear it apart. What a great sin. It was not wrong to crucify the lamb. He was the lamb. But to tear down God at the cross, there was a there was a there was a problem, guys. There was a real issue, guys, because you cannot crucify him who is a king. You can't crucify the king. And when that thing happened, what happened? When they teared down his body, it was almost like the whole creation was torn apart because all creation came from him and all creation was created by him. So when you tear down him at the cross, it is no different than you are tearing every creation apart. And literally, this is what happened, guys literally stones were there was an earthquake all of the sudden St 
stones were separated mountains were separated everything in creation was separated after we 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 we, we tear down the flesh of him who was the word because when you are tearing down the word you are tearing every creation apart and everything was being torn apart that even the veil that was stopping us from entering the presence of God was also torn apart so apostle paul says let's agree that it was the same word <laughs> the same word we, we 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 touched this word and we fellowship with this word it was the same word it was the same god who was at the beginning And we agree that the same word became flesh. So if we believe that Jesus became flesh and he was God on earth and he was, he, he clothed flesh, he reincarnated. I want us to use the word reincarnation. What is difficult to believe that you, you were also reincarnated. And I said something. Although the way Jesus was born and the way you are born is not the same. But it's reincarnation. Both of you were reincarnated. It's just that when he was, when he was born, no human blood was supposed to touch him. He had to come clean. You know, no, no human blood was supposed to touch him. You know. And you, although human blood did touch you, you are you you have been reincarnated. I said to you, a larger part of you exists in the spiritual world. You are you are, you probably lived in the spiritual world before you lived in the natural world. You just chose to come on earth. To, to you are sent by God. There is an assignment. There is a heavenly mandate. That has been given to you. By heaven. To come and fulfill on the earth. But let me tell you something. You are not your own body. You are not your own mistakes. You are not your own failures. You are spirit. And you are here on earth to represent a kingdom which you come from. You are here on earth to represent a kingdom which you are an ambassador. You are representing the government of heaven on earth. 